Check out Chaos Cards for awesome prices and products. Who is here, and we are going to be opening this. Never heard of it before. It's a Sword of Online board game, Sword of Fellas. So when I first bought it, like, when I said board game, I expected something a bit, you know, like this size. You know, but it's like almost a bit more than half the size. So, uh, no idea how to play this because I've never actually heard of it before. Um, well, it's um, for ages 10 and up, uh, one to four players, and it's supposed to be played for 30 minutes a game, I guess. And uh, this on the back is by the uh, Kaidokawa Corporation. Uh, welcome to the world of Sword Art Online. In this cooperative dice game, okay, you will take the role of Pirito, Asuna, or other SAO players, and fight your way together through fierce battles for survival. The only thing you can trust is your and your partner's dice. Both of your roles will determine the fate of Aincrad and you. So like the components, 25 cards, so six character cards, ten scenario cards, eight item cards, and one support card, fourteen dice, so four main, four support, six character dice, a manual, and thirty tokens, which are uh, ten pieces of half damage, twelve pieces of five tenths damage, one Elizabeth power, one silica power, four ability usage, one step token, one blank token. <laughs> It says here, the plastic film around the box is just for packaging. Please throw it away after opening. <laughs> the box and the wrap are there to protect the product during transport. Please note that boxes with dents, dirt, and or scratches will not be replaced. Oh, that's nice. Made in China, for sale outside Japan only. Okay, so let's open this and see what it is. I mean, it's SAO, so I couldn't be, I couldn't resist getting it. So it seems like a sturdy uh, cardboard, whatever. Probably kind of like a uh, pattern on it. You call it a pattern, I guess. Let's see, it's like a dice checkered board, like squares. If you see in the light. Okay, so yeah, so let's do a normal box. We have a manual. Ooh, that's interesting. So like, the manual opens that way. Lots of writing. So like, we got the story. Pause to read that. Game overview. I'll give you intervals to a uh, pause so you can read it yourself. Because if I read it, we'd be here all day. Because I'm a very slow reader. And this thing doesn't have autofocus, so uh. Let's probably lean into the screen or put it on like full screen. I've got the flow of the game.
Explanation of special effects. So that is everything. It's a nice manual though. Okay. So here we have this little ziplock bag. We got like Klein there, Agile there, normal, more normal guys. I guess the black or support or the white or support, I don't know. Let's see. Got Silica there, I believe. So we had Klein. You can tell it's out because of the axes. And let's see, who is this one? I'm guessing it might be. Yeah, that's Asuna. And this one, Kirito. And this one, because the, the mace is Elizabeth. So that's cool. Nice okay, so that are the dice. Very cool. And we have I guess these are item cards. Okay, we got some very Huh, it is double sided. But very thick cardboard, that's for sure. Wow. That is nice. Oh, I get it 5, 10. So you got 5 on one side, you got 10 on the other side of the damage counter. I get it now. <laughs> okay, that, that took a bit of a while. And there's obviously a blank one. Whatever that is. A plus 2 of something. I said, 5, 10. Here's the uh, 2, I guess it's a shield one or whatever. No idea what that is. That one's, it's not a half count, half damage, it's a 1 and 2. Okay. Oh. So I'm guessing these are character cards and these are the item cards. Uh, six characters, ten scenario, eight item, and one support. So those are be all in here. So let's open this up and see what we get. Seems good so far. Now how do I open this without damaging anything? Oh come on! They certainly jam packed it. That's for sure. Uh huh. Gotcha. Okay. So. Very nice back. So we have a consumable, uh, I guess, an item. So a healing crystal. Can use at the start of a player's turn. Pick a player, that player heals up to her, his or her max HP. So we've got two of those. An ability potion. Which is, can use at the start of a player's turn. Pick a player, that player restores one use of his or her ability. So, seems two of those. We have a Holy Soul Returner Crystal. Hmm. Can use when any player is reduced to zero or less HP. Restore that player's HP to one. So, like the last ditch effort. Oh, I have one of those, huh? Okay, so this is a Ring of Agility. When this item is gained, pick a player that gets this turn. This item, sorry. The owner of this item gets one extra roll per turn. That is, sounds handy. It's just... Huh. Coat of Midnight. So, Kirito's coat. When this item is gained, pick a player that gets this item. The owner of this item reduces damage suffered by one per damage occasion. Ooh. Dark Repulsor. When this item is gained, pick a player that gets the item. The owner of this item increases all damage by one. Damage dealt by one. Ooh, and here's the support card, which is Yui. 
Actually, it has your name on the side as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Can use when a character is subject to a counterattack. Nullify the counterattack and deal as much damage to the enemy, then remove this card from the game. Very nice. That works on these cards too, by the way. So those cards are nice. I go. Come on, man. Open! Aha! Yay! Got it! Okay, here I guess are the character cards and whatever is left. So that's pretty cool though. So you got like when he levels up, I guess, for up here. So like HP and levels. So when he's level 30, he has 12. When he's level 50, he has 18. When he's level 80, he's got 24. And these ability things, whatever they stand for, are correspond with each level. And so do these attacks. So like when he's he can do like Earthshaker attack when he is less than level 20. More than level 20. More than or equal to level 20. I haven't actually had to look at those more than or equal to or same like math symbols and they just. <laughs> so that's Agil. And here's like a uh, description of the attacks and stuff. The character with the highest HP and quite high damage output. He can tank without being too afraid of counterattacks, but is slightly hard to switch with, and thus care is par paramount. When dealing with enemies that deal AOE damage, the icon, um, all that green pieces or whatever, squares, means the total result of that many dice. For angle, it's best to have a high result. Hmm. So like uh, what I mentioned earlier, Earthshaker, it causes a wave, shock wave by smashing the axe into the ground, damaging everyone around. So like that's a multi-damage. And like... Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So next person we have here is Asuna in her Knight of the Blood uniform here. Very cool. So like, yes, he does say that you have the highest HP because like, if you compare it to Asuna's, it is quite high. Probably because he's a tank though, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see what it says about her. Has many sword skills with a gentle difficulty and thus very easy to switch with. However, the damage she deals is lower. Aim for a trusty switch and use abilities to let the next attacker deal the fatal blow, the final blow. And like it says what the uh, red icon is for. I mean, she's got loads of red icons. But it means the dice needs to form an ascending straight, straight like one, two, three. Who rules a one, two, three? Huh. So like, let's see, uh, Starry Tear, a five hit rapier combo, aims simultaneously for the head and all four limbs. Well, that's gotta hurt. Okay, so the next one is Kirito. So, I'm guessing all these character cards is like the characters you can choose to be for this board game. But I'm not sure how it's a board game when it doesn't have a board. But there we go. Um, yeah. So, he's pretty cool. He does have a nice uh, 20 HP at level 80. Well, that's a lot of X's, whatever they need. 
Okay. Deals the most damage among all the characters, but is hard to use as he deals as he needs identical die results in order to trigger his sword skills. If you want to do burst damage, don't hesitate to use abilities to get the results you want. So the sword skills with icons XXX will trigger if you have that many dice with the same result. If you get all eight with the same, you get you can trigger the eclipse, which is whoops, <laughs> where did I fling that? The top thing with that is a lot of same rules. Yeah, that's you have to be very lucky with ruling for that. Here is Klein with his uh, what's it? Furin. Well, it's a samurai. Like he's a guild uniform. I guess you could say. A typical attacker with mid-level HP and damage. However, this uh, with his piercing effects on his attacks, he is very powerful against defending enemies. He can also easily use up a dice and has a good switch record. A balanced character. Klein is best to have low results for when rolling, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty cool. His attacks sound cool too. <laughs> okay, we go through these a bit faster. I'll try. And name on the side, which all of them do have anyway. But uh, let's see, character with mid-level damage output, power to buff the others, sword skills will vary much depending on the die results, so it's necessary to ponder upon what sword skills are needed now before rolling and re-rolling. The O icon means an odd die result, 1, 3, or 5. So, uh, yeah. Very nice. Okay, here we have Silica. Lots of symbols on her card. <laughs> uh, let's see, a character who can heal and reduce damage, therefore raises the survival chances of the group. However, as many of her attacks are chain combos with her familiar, she's decidedly weak against enemies with defense. Okay. Nice, uh, Attack names too, though. Now here are the uh, what's it, what was it called? The scenario cards, I think. So here is the lower section fight. With that kobold sentinel A. Kobolds and B. I guess there's a HP level steps, which how many times you gotta kill the guy. Um, Ilfang, the Kobold Lord. So, uh, on the back says lower section. Here is Ambush of the PK Guild. Boss fight the female leader, fighting the underlings. So yeah, so like, uh, what you can get, like, the minions and the, the boss. Still lower section. Here's disaster in the trap room. Oh, this was a sad episode. Still lower section. And here is Quest for the Rare Materials. I remember in this episode, he has, he's on the ground, he's in the air, he's in the dragon layer. This layer. Which I think uh, the dragon materials is technically the dragon's poo, isn't it? This middle section now. Ooh, Battle of the Holy Knight. 
Uh, this is a very creepy version of Santa Claus. Nicholas the Renegade. Middle section. Crimson Bloodthirst. Corridial. Yeah, I hate that guy. Middle section. Yeah, that's always a cool boss fight in the anime anyway. The blue eyed demon. Gleam eyes and gleam eyes raged. Upper section. The skeleton cutter. So I yeah. Upper section. Two left. Trap of the Death God. That is pretty cool. Kind of freaky with the eyes, but there we go. Another upper section. So there's a nice episode for that one too. And the last card. We have the end of the world. With Heathcliff then a Kaiba Akiko. Or if you want to say the name of the other way around, that's fine too. Final battle. So that is basically the main anime. Or, you know, scenarios in the anime. Which doesn't seem like much when you put it on a card, does it? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, ten. Which would sit on the back of the box, so why am I even counting it? Alright. Anyway, so that was pretty cool. I'm not sure how it's a board game with no board, but there we go. Very cool dice. Nice manual. And yeah, that is everything. So, um, well, this video went on for quite a while, so I, I told you I read slowly. Um, well, thank you for watching, and I think this was the only one, like, they had, so I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, that was, like, a, just a random find, which is quite good, because I do, like, Sword Art Online is one of my favorites. So I do, like, collecting what I can sometimes. Anyway, so, thank you for watching. If you like, subscribe for more. Over and out.